Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 6th of February. India cancels all existing e-visas, normal visas from China over coronavirus outbreak. Afghans hold anti-Pakistan protests in Kabul, demand release of Pashtun activist. And former Sri Lankan officials accused of Easter blast negligence granted bail. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday, reiterating the stand of his government on the Citizenship Amendment Act, claimed the new citizenship law will not affect any Indian and said that the opposition Congress party was instigating minorities. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday while replying to motion of thanks to the President's address in the Parliament, hit out at the opposition Congress party and defended his government's decision to implement the Citizenship Amendment Act. The Prime Minister targeted the opposition over the ongoing protests against the new citizenship law and accused it of fear-mongering and misleading the country. He said his government's decisiveness led to resolution of decades-old problems like Ram Jan Bhumi issue, abrogating of Article 370 from Jammu and Kashmir, and outlawing triple talaq, the Islamic practice of instant divorce. Protests have continued across the country against the new citizenship law since the past two months. Critics believe it is against the secular fabric of the country as it excludes Muslims. The Citizenship Amendment Act paves way to Indian citizenship to Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Parsis, Buddhists and Christians who fled religious persecution from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh and settled in India on or before December 31, 2014. In view of the rapid spread of month-long coronavirus that has so far killed more than 500 people in China, India on Thursday announced that electronic visas and normal visas from China that have been issued so far are no longer valid. India's foreign ministry in the wake of coronavirus outbreak on Thursday announced that all normal existing and electronic visas from China that have been issued so far are no longer valid. While addressing a weekly briefing, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar informed that apart from those evacuated, 10 Indian citizens have indicated they want to come back from China but were unable to clear the health screening process. Kumar said the ministry is in regular contact with the Indian nationals and exploring all possibilities for their return. Existing e-visas are no longer valid. Similarly, the normal visa which have been issued, they are also no longer valid. Those who have compelling reasons to visit India, they should contact our embassy or their nearest consulates to apply for a visa. India has so far successfully carried out evacuation of 640 Indian nationals and seven Maldivians on two flights from China. The country last week had confirmed three cases of coronavirus infection in its southern Kerala province. Moving on, several Afghans, including ethnic Pashtuns, on Wednesday held a protest outside the Pakistan embassy in Kabul against Islamabad's continued interference in Afghan affairs and the recent arrest of Pashtun activist Manzoor Pashtin. Scores of Afghans, including members of ethnic Pashtun community on Wednesday, protested outside the Pakistan embassy in Kabul against Islamabad's continued interference in Afghan affairs and the recent arrest of Manzoor Pashtin, the chief of Pashtun Tahafuz movement, or PTM. 
Anti Pakistan sentiments have been rising with Islamabad's mounting atrocities against the Pashtuns in Pakistan's Pashtun dominated tribal areas bordering Afghanistan. No, Afghan no, President no. Ashraf Ghani had also expressed concern over Pashtuns' detention in Pakistan last month and said, Governments in the region must support and encourage peaceful civilian movements for justice. Uh, the same Pakistan which uh, championing uh, the rights uh, of the Kashmiri people and itself violates uh, the fundamental human rights uh, uh, of the Pashtun people and especially a person like uh, Manzur Pashtin uh, who is um, a renowned human rights activist. Manzoor Pashtin was sent to a 14-day judicial remand on January 27th on sedition charges over a speech in which he allegedly said that Pakistan's 1973 constitution violated basic human rights. Pashtin's PTM, a peaceful social movement, is known for its strident criticism of the country's powerful military for alleged enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Pashtun-dominated tribal areas. Prolonged power cuts have continued to make day-to-day -day life difficult for locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Residents have claimed in spite of having abundant water resources to generate sufficient hydroelectricity, they do not get sufficient amount of electricity and over that they have to pay heavy bills. Prolonged power cuts in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have left the locals helpless. People in the illegally occupied region have blamed the authorities for not doing much to solve the problem in spite of having abundant water resources to generate sufficient hydroelectricity. Unscheduled and long hours of load shedding have hit the businesses and studies of children. <laughs> छोटे-छोटे बच्चे बीमार हो गए ना बिजली ना होने दी वजह तो लोग का सर्दी ना सर्दी इतनी ज्यादा है और बिजली एक घंटा आंधी है दो घंटे गायब है अच्छा बिजली काम होने दी वजह ना बेल भी काम होने नहीं आने नहीं नहीं बेल कोई काम नहीं होने बेल बल के ज्यादा आने नहीं पहले बोलो Locals allege Islamabad has been exploiting their natural resources for years and taxes them heavily but never allocates any funds for the betterment of the illegally occupied region the Colombo High Court on Wednesday ordered the release of former Sri Lankan Defence Secretary Hema Sari Fernando and Inspector General of Police Pujita Jaisundara on conditional bail. Both were arrested in July 2019 over their failure to take measures to prevent the Easter Sunday attacks despite having prior knowledge of the attack. Sri Lanka's former Defence Secretary Hema Sri Fernando and suspended Inspector General of Police Pujit Jaya Sundra were on Wednesday ordered to be released on bail by Colombo High Court. Both Fernando and Jaya Sundra were arrested on 2nd July 2019 over their failure to take measures to prevent the Easter Sunday attacks, despite having prior knowledge of the attack and remanded on charges of criminal negligence and murder. Fernando and Jaya Sundra were ordered to be released on a cash bail of Rs 250,000 with two sureties, Rs 2.5 million each, by the Colombo High Court. Nine suicide bombers on April 21 last year carried out a series of blasts that tore through three churches and as many high-end hotels, killing 258 people, including foreigners. The incident is considered Sri Lanka's deadliest violence since the brutal civil war ended in 2009. Though Islamic State claimed the attacks, Sri Lankan government blamed local Islamist extremist group National Tohi Jamaat for the bombings. So far, nearly 300 suspects have been arrested. In East from Nepal, outbreak of the coronavirus in neighboring China have prompted schools in Nepal to add masks to their uniform for students and staff. The death toll from the month-long coronavirus climbed to more than 500 in China on Thursday. Students and faculty members of a school in Nepal's Bhaktapur district on Thursday were seen wearing surgical masks as authorities have made it a part of the uniform amid coronavirus fears. 
Recent outbreak of the coronavirus in neighboring China and the increasing pollution in the country have prompted schools in many areas of Bhaktapur to add on masks in their dress protocol. Last month, a Nepali student who had come home on holiday from Wuhan in China was tested positive for the coronavirus, making it the first confirmed case in South Asia. Meanwhile, search operations were underway in Nepal's Pokhara city to trace two missing Chinese nationals suspected to be infected with coronavirus. The Chinese nationals, a man and a woman, reportedly went missing last week from a hospital in Pokhara after they were asked to sit in isolation for showing symptoms similar to the coronavirus. Spokesperson of Ministry of Health and Population claimed they were not officially informed about the two individuals until Wednesday afternoon. The death toll from the month-long coronavirus outbreak has continued to climb in China, rising to more than 500. India and Bangladesh began two sector-level meetings of bordering districts in India's northeastern Agartala city on Wednesday to discuss smuggling, infiltration and boundary issues. A two-day Indo-Bangladesh District Magistrate and Deputy Commissioner level meeting began in India's northeast in Tripura. The meeting focuses on better coordination for cross-border issues, including prevention of smuggling of contraband, illegal cross-border movement and organized human trafficking. The meeting is being attended by three district magistrates of Tripura and administrative from four districts of Bangladesh, along with India's paramilitary border security force. The illegal uh, trafficking as, the, as well as illegal movement, the issues has been discussed at, uh, in detail uh, with the law enforcement agencies of India as well as Bangladesh side and both the countries had, has expressed the concerns on this illegal movement. So it has been decided that uh, we will continue the same efforts taken uh, earlier. India and Bangladesh share friendly relations and multidimensional cooperation between the two countries ranges from traditional sectors to frontier technologies of nuclear science, space and information technology. Farming has taken a new turn in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir region as locals are engaging in mushroom cultivation at home. They have been making good profits with the help of local agriculture authorities who are training them for the business. A growing number of locals in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir region have taken up mushroom cultivation as a means of living apart from producing other cash crops. With the help of the agriculture department which has been providing low-cost technology, subsidies and also imparts training, people growing mushrooms in the region have earned good profits so far. They said mushroom production at home does not require much investment and time and anybody can do it, even while managing their household chores. Agriculture department is help us. They give us a start for new units. They provide a up to the tune of Rs. 15,000. तो और वो टाइमली आते हैं हमारे पास सजेशन देते हैं ऐसे मतलब कुछ भी अगर हमें प्रॉब्लम होती हो इसमें प्रोडक्शन में उस टाइम वो हमें हैंडल गाइड करते हैं बिजनेस इसमें इतना टाइम नहीं देना पड़ता है इसमें सुबह या शाम को हम खाली इसके साथ रह सकते हैं इसमें ज्यादा टाइम भी वेस्ट नहीं हो सकते बाकी काम भी कर अपना काम भी कर सकते हैं अगर घर में कोई काम हो गई वो भी कर सकते हैं इसके साथ साथ Encouraging people towards such initiatives is part of government schemes that had been launched to reduce poverty among farmers and the weaker sections of the society in the Kashmir Valley. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsLink.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsLine and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsLine. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.